This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Baruchim and welcome everyone to a special presentation in honor of the new book that came out, B'Siyata Deshmaya, Shechiyanu V'Kimanu V'Higiyanu L'Azman Hazeh, The Darkness and the Dawn. Thank the Rebbe Yisham for granting me the great Zuchus to be able to present to my dear friends <coughs> some uh, ideas about the three weeks, about Tishbav, about the Dalet Hanesim, about the Holocaust. This book comes in the um, aftermath of the Shloshim for my dear grandfather, Zechatzak Levracha, Harav Mordechai Leib Gladstein, L'chai Olam Hava, and a, a lot of the book speaks about his spiritual heroism, his Masiras Nefesh, his majestic personality, and may this shir and may our learning be an Eloi to his neshama. This a special presentation is brought to you <coughs> by uh, Chickens for Shabbos. Chickens for Shabbos, as uh, many of our listeners know, is a unique organization and that they focus their energy on those in Kla Yisrael who need our help the most, uh, Grushais, Agunais, they pay special attention to the families of Malamdim and Rabbeim because they are the future of Klal Yisrael. And if you enjoy this presentation, I uh, humbly request you go to the Yad Eliezer website, you go to the icon that says <coughs> uh, Agunais, Grushais, Malamdim, and please contribute generously toward chickens for Shabbos. They are ensuring that our best and our finest are cared for and in the merit of your support. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu always support you and your family at Biyas Goyal Tzedek. This year is hosted by Chazak. I want to thank my good friends, Rav uh, Ilan Meirav, Rav Yaniv Meirav. I want to thank my good friend, Rabbi Aboff, for orchestrating this year. And may they have great Hatzlach in all of their work, especially in their facilitating young boys to be able to go to Yeshivas, Tavay Alechem, Bracha. The Darkness and the Dawn. That's the title of this new book. And Kishmai Kenho. The darkness is obvious. The, we are about to approach, tonight begins, the period of the Bain Hamitzarim, the most tragic period of our calendar a period of time that has been almost a lightning rod for Jewish tragedy. Almost inexplicably, when there is disaster to happen, it happens then. On the other hand, as we're going to learn tonight, there is great promise and great potential and great spiritual energy latent in these particular days. The Svarim teach us, Kol roid feha hisiguha bein hamitzarim. Literally, all of our pursuers catch up to us in this period known as the Bein HaMetzarim, but the Svarim teach us, Kol Roy Defeka, anyone who chases God, Hisi Guha, will achieve closeness to Rebbe Nishalem, Bein HaMetzarim, during this period of the year. So on the one hand, it's a period of darkness, but on the other hand, it is the dawn. It is the time that we await the sunrise because we could feel the glimmer of hope that is latent in these holy days. Let us begin with a Gemara, Masech de Megillah. The Gemara Megillah tells us on Dafhei, <coughs> and this comes from the Sefer, um, this is the second chapter of the book. You wanted to know how to get the, gut, the book. I'm glad you asked. This book, you could go to our website, rabbidg.com, and you click on the book, and you could get the book. Now, if you want to get free shipping on the book, I'm going to tell you a little secret. There is a promo code, Rabbi DG, R A B B I D G, capital letters, and you could get free shipping on the book. Or you could go to the Art Scroll website and uh, procure your book for these uh, days. I hope it will uh, elevate this season of the year for you. Well, the Gemara tells us of, of a few unusual practices that, get, that the great Rebbe, Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi, had. Number one, the Gemara says on Dafhei and Megillah, Rebbe Natan Natiya Rebbe planted a tree on Purim. 
What's Rebbe planting a tree on Purim? There's a question whether you're allowed to do Malacha on Purim. Why is Rebbe planting trees? It's not Arbor Day. It's not Tu B'Shvat. What's he planting a tree? That's certainly worthy of our discussion and focus. Bezos Hashem in the upcoming book on Purim. See, I'm telling you a secret now. The next book, Bezos Hashem, will be on Purim. I'm not sure about the title yet. Maybe the Turnaround and the Triumph. How's that for starters? And we're going to discuss that practice of Rebbe, why Rebbe planted a tree on Purim. Secondly, Virachatz Bekroina Shel Tzipoyri B'Shiva Asar B'Tamaz. Rebbe bathed in a wagon in Tzipoyri on the 17th day of Tamaz. Now why is Rebbe bathing on the 17th day of Tamaz? Why is he doing it publicly? Bathing would seem to be an act of comfort. Is that an appropriate behavior, especially publicly? On Shiva Asabat Tamuz, there's it is a question whether Rachitza is mutter on the on these Tanesim. What does it mean he bathed in the wagon in Sipoiri? What's the meaning of this? And the Gemara says even more explic- inexplicably, Ubike Shalak or Tishabav. Rebbe wanted to uproot Tishabav. And the Gemara says, Loi the Chachamim did not agree that he could be uh, uproot Tishabav. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Abba Bar Zavda says, no, 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 that wasn't the story. The story was a situation where Tishabah fell out on Shabbos and <coughs> they pushed it off to Sunday. And Rabbi says, well, once. Now, the reason why if Tishabah comes out on Shabbos, we push it off to Sunday is there's a principle, Akdume Paranus Aloy Makdeminon. We don't advance punishment. Tishabah is a day of punishment. So we delay it. So Rabbi says, once we pushed it off, get rid of it completely. These practices certainly are worthy of our attention. Why in the world is Rebbe bathing on Shavasa Batamas? Why does he want to uproot Tisha B'av? Why do we need to know it was in Sipairi? Why do we need to know it was in a wagon? And here's another question. Kayamar it's one of my favorite psukim. So says the Almighty. Master of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the seventh month, the fast of the tenth month will be for the house of Yehuda for joyous days. In other words, these fast days will turn into happy days for the Jewish people. By the way, if I may, you must see the chapter on that begins on page 457 called Asar Bateves on that very day where we have a very in-depth explanation and exposition on the fact that the Tanisim were not legislated for days of the month, but rather for which month. And that's why they're called Tzayim Ravi, Tzayim HaChamishi, Tzayim HaShvi, and so forth. But why does the Navi say that these days will be transformed into days of happiness for the base Yehuda, the house of Judah? What does Yehuda have to do with the fast days? All of Israel, all of Kali Yisrael fast, and therefore when these days are turned into days of celebration, we will all celebrate. They are not specific to Yehuda more than Zvulan or God. Why Davka <coughs> do we say they will be Lebeis Yehuda Lasasa and Lasimcha? So now I want to move on to one of my favorite all time encounters when Rus advises Naomi, when Nami advises Rus to go to Boyaz and she tells her, you know, my daughter, wait, wait this out because you, I'm glad that you followed my advice. We know that Nami advised Rus she should lay down at the threshing floor where Boyaz was sleeping and tell him that she wants him to marry her and she comes back home and Rus, uh, Naomi tells Rus, this man's not going to delay. He's not going to push you off. <clears throat> Wait here, my daughter, until you know how the matter will fall because <clears throat> he will not let this matter rest unless he seals the deal today. In other words, Bayaz will not procrastinate. He will not delay, but rather he will seal the deal and he's going to let you know today, Adar ya, Adar nish. He's not going to delay any further. And the question is, how 
did Nami, why was Nami so convinced that Baez would seal the deal today? There are a lot of things that needed to be ironed out over here. Uh, chief among them is, can Boyaz even marry Rus? Rus was a Moabite woman. Uh, she came from Moyav. Uh, by the way, this week's parasha, Bilam. Rus was a descendant of Moyav. Actually, we gave a shir this week. Well, Bilam may have been a Midyani. <coughs> anyway, but uh, Rus, for all intents and purposes, was a Moabite. And it's unclear if you're allowed to marry somebody from Moyav. So how was Nami so sure that Bayez would seal the deal today and he would settle the matter today. Maybe he would delay, maybe he would not know. So th- this is a, certainly a question worthy of our uh, attention. Now, I'm looking at the cover now. I'm getting distracted. On the top of the cover we have the uh, image of the Arch of Titus. We actually gave a share recently about the menorah that appears in the Arch of Titus. First of all, it was not diagonal the way the Shita of the Rambam is and there weren't legs like the Rambam and Rashi said and uh, we explained that but back to the ranch the Medrash tells us about an amazing phenomenon that occurred on Tisha B'av. and that is the Medrash says that even though we treat Tisha B'av as a day of sadness but the Medrash says Amar lohem afhi simcha. there's a joyous quality to it menachem. on that day Mashiach was born Says the Gemara, on, uh, says the Mishnah, says the Medrash, that on Tisha B'av, Mashiach is born. And that is very curious. One would think that the last day you would imagine Mashiach would be born is Tisha B'av. And yet, the Medrash says, in fact, Tisha B'av was, uh, B- Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. How do we explain that? So there's an amazing B'nai Yisachar. By the way, you still have time, you could join us on our trip. We actually have a, a little bit of a change of an, uh, in the itinerary because Belarus is closed, so we have to go into Poland, and instead we're going to the Bnei Saschar, and we're going to the Rav Naftali of Rapshitz, and we're going to Rav Tzadik HaKoyen. Okay, so the Bnei Saschar offers an astounding idea in the name of Rav Pinchas Karatzer. And Rav Pinchas Karatzer says, what's the pshat that David HaMelech, Ben David, Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. He says as follows. He says that Mashiach is the holiest soul. In order to produce such a holy soul, you need a holy union. Now, there's a very interesting and important and relevant halacha. And the Gemara tells us, Chayiv Adam Lifgadis Ishtai Bisha Shiyat When a man travels, before he travels, He's obligated to sp- uh, pay special attention to his wife because when uh, a man is going to leave his wife, it's going to create a certain longing in her and she's going to yearn for him and therefore he's obligated to uh, recognize that and to give her the proper marital attention. The Bnei Saschar says that human nature is, as we know, absence makes the heart grow fond. That's why you can have... Uh, two people, that they're at each other's throats, they can't stand each other, they're always fighting, but when one goes to the airport and is about to fly away, all of a sudden they embrace, and there's chibuk, venishuk, and they show great emotion and great passion. Why is that? Because leaving causes the heart to grow fond, and it creates a, it intensifies the ahava. This explains, you know, the Gemara tells us that <laughs> Baba Basra and Dav Tzadik Tess, that how were the Keruvim in the Kaddish Hakadoshim positioned? The Gemara says when we did the will of Hashem, the Keruvim faced each other. When we didn't do the will of Hashem, the Keruvim were away from each other. So if I ask you, friends, how would you have expected the position of the Keruvim to be in at the time that the Gentiles came in to destroy the Temple? You would have expected that the Keruvim were facing, were, were away from each other. They were probably, you know, all huffy-puffy. They, they were probably at great distance. Says the Gemara, darshaning the Pasuk, Kemar ish v'loyos saviv, that the Kruvim were embracing like a man embraces and is intertwined with his companion. When the Goyim entered the Temple, the Kruvim reflected an intense and passionate relationship between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. yes, says of Pinchas Karzer, because God was leaving us. And even though He was upset with us, 
and angry at us, so to speak. And he was departing. And Echa Yashvahav Adad Hayihir Abosiyam Hayisa Ki Almana We were like a widow. We weren't a widow. We were like a widow. The Gemara says like a woman whose husband left overseas. So God was leaving us. And even though He was angry at us and we weren't getting along, but the prolonged absence made God's heart become so fond and affectionate toward us, that was reflected in the intertwining of the Kruvim at that fateful moment when the Goyim came in to destroy the Beis HaMikdash. And therefore that was, so to speak, the most intimate moment of our connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And a moment of such intimacy produced such an elevated Heilige Neshama, namely the Neshama of Mashiach. Mashiach had to be born on Tisha B'Av, because that's the moment that God yearned and longed for us. And because He yearned and longed for us, therefore, that was a holy zivug. And because it was such a holy zivug, it intensified Hashem's longing for us, <coughs> and it produced the holy soul of Mashiach Tzidkenu. So that explains why Mashiach was born on Tisha B'Av. Let's come back to the significance of Shiva Asabatama. So we see Tisha B'Av has in it latent a certain dawn, a certain element of Simcha. Comes the Holy Chassam Seifer, Rav Moshe Seifer, and his drushas on page Shin Beis Amad Beis to Shin Gimel Amad. You know how Naomi knew that Boyaz would settle the matter today. You need to look at a Targum in the Megillah. Because when did Naomi, when did Rus and Naomi arrive in the fields of Yehuda? The Pasuk says, let me read to you the Pasuk. That they arrived... Vatashab Nami Virus Hamoya Via Kalasa Ima Hashava Miside Mayav Vehema Bao Behis Lachem Bishilas Kitsir Se Oirim. So that's pretty good. We had a Pasak in Echa, we had a Pasak in Zacharya, and now we have a Pasak in Rus. They came at the beginning of the harvest of the barley. What's the arrival date? Says Targum Yoinusan Ben Uziel. Ve'inun asoi beis lechem b'malei They came out of Pesach. And how long did they stay? Vatid ba'ak ben arois boyaz. They stayed from the end of the harvest of the barley until the harvest of the wheat. Three months. So they came out of Pesach. They stayed three months, which concluded on the 15th day of Tammuz. Rus advises Nami. Rus was advised by Nami. Go to Baya. Say, I want you to marry me and I want you to redeem the fields that belong to Elimelech. She did that on the 16th day of Tammuz. And then, that was the night of the 16th. She comes back because uh, Bayas tells her, let me figure out what to do, I'll let you know. Don't call me, I'll call you. So she figured maybe she's, he's stalling for time. But Rus tells Nami, no! Vatoimer shviviti arasher teidin echipal davar ki la yishkoid He's going to settle the matter today. He's going to finish the matter today. How did she know that he's going to settle the matter today? Because this was now the 16th of Tammuz. And the 17th of Tammuz is a ominous time for the Beis Yehuda. As we know, the rest of the Jewish people were exiled a hundred years before the Chorban. They weren't exiled during the three weeks. So for the rest of the Jewish people, the three weeks is not an ominous time. But the Malchus Beis David and Shevet Yehuda, they were exiled in the three weeks. And Boyaz knew that this was an ominous time for the 
Malchai Yehuda, and therefore he would not get married during the three weeks, just like we don't get married during the three weeks after the Chorban, he wouldn't get married during the three weeks before the Chorban. He sensed the impending ominous Zman, latent at that time of the year. So Naomi says, listen, I know this man. He ain't going to delay this until later. Tonight is going to be the last time that Boyaz will marry you. Because he's not going to delay this till tomorrow when Shiva Sabatama starts. And by the way, Boyaz died that very night. And it says Achsam Seifer, if he died on Shiva Sabatamas, he was probably born on Shiva Sabatamas. And Sadiqim Hashem delays. Hashem fills their years. So Bayaz knew it was his birthday on the 17th of Tammuz, so he, w- he was afraid he might die on that day. So that's another reason the Chassam Seifer says that Bayaz will not delay marrying Rus. And therefore, because Shiva Asar Batamuz is an ominous time for the Malche Yehuda and the base David, Yish, uh, Bayaz would not delay any longer and he would, he would seal the deal today. And sure enough, Bayaz lived with Rus that night. And you know who was conceived that night? Oyved was conceived that night. Ubayaz hoyled as Oyved. Ve Oyved hoyled as Yishai. And Yishai hoyled as David. So the beginning of the tzmicha, of the flourishing of the Malchus based David, ha- began on Shavasabatamas. So even though it's a day of great tragedy, but it's also a day of great, it's a fortuitous time for the Malchus based David. As we see that Oyved was conceived on Shiva Asr Batamas. And even though T- Tisha B'av is the day of doom, the day of disaster, but who is born on Tisha B'av? Oh, on Tisha B'av, Mashiach was born. And what about Asara Bateves? Asara Bateves is also a tragic day. It's the day they began the siege on Yerushalayim. Yeah, it's the day they began the siege. But says Rabbi Yonasin Ibishitz, if Mashiach was born on Tisha B'av, the 9th of Av, then seven months earlier, Mashiach was conceived. When was Mashiach con- was conceived? Mashiach was conceived on Tisha B'av. <coughs> So all these days, despite their tragic qualities, have great simcha and simichas based David latent in it. Tisha B'av is the birthday of Mashiach. Shavu Sabatamas is the conception of Oyved. Asar Bateves is the conception of Mashiach. Says the Bnei Yisachar, you know why Rebbe wanted to be Mavat al Tishabav? The Gemara in Shabbos says, anyone who says David sinned is making a big mistake. Like the Pasuk says, Vayihi David l'chol derachav maskil v'ashem imay. David was successful in all his ways and God was with him. So why do, what do I do with the Pasuk? Madua Bazisa Estevar Hashem Amar Rav Rav said Rebbe Da'asi Mi David Rebbe who came from David Mahapech V'darish V'schuse De David is always looking for a way to justify David's behavior. Rebbe <coughs> always defended David because he came from David. Well, Rebbe came from David. Who's born on Tishbav? Mashiach. A boy is born to the family of Rebbe on Tishbav. Chazal tell us, it's Bron Shulchan Aruch, it's Yushalmi. Noilad ben Zachar Nisrape kol hamishpacha. When a male progeny is born, the whole, ha- the whole family is healed. The ho- whole family is healed. And therefore, if, if, if Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av, the whole family is healed, Rebbe, who's part of that family, he wanted to be Oikar Tisha B'av. No, Nobody else wanted to be Oikar Tisha B'av because they're not part of the Mishpacha. But Rebbe, who's part of the family of David, when Mashiach, he senses Mashiach being born on Tisha B'av. So he says, okay, let's just get rid of it entirely. I feel the remedy, the redeeming quality, the healing properties of Tisha B'av. And that's why Rebbe wanted to be Mavatel Tisha B'av. Well, the Rebbein Shalom gave me a great matana. The same way the Holy Bnei Yisachar says Rebbe wanted to be Mavast al Tishabav because Rebbe sensed the flourishing of the Malchus based David on Tishabav. Perhaps we could say he also sensed a certain tzemicha, a certain blossoming of the Davidic dynasty on Shiva Asr Batamaz. And that's why Rebbe 
felt that certain mourning practices could be done away with because he sensed the fruition and the tzemich of the Malchus Beis David on Shabbat Shabbat Hamas. So we could read the Gemara as follows. We could say, Rebbe Rachatz. Literally, Rachatz mean, he, means he bathed. But, like we say in Baruch Shemei, Be'ana Rachitz, in him I trust. Rebbe Rachatz, Rebbe had faith. Bekroina, in the Keren, in the, the, in the glory of Mashiach. Keren is a word associated with Mashiach. The Yarem Keren Mashiachai. He had faith and trust in the glory of Tzipayri. Which nation is called the bird? We're called the bird, as the Pasuk says, by the Brisbane and Basarim. V'yes hatzipar loy basar. And the bird, he did not split. Rebbe Rochatz! Rebbe had faith! Bekroina! In the glory shall Tzipayri of Klal Yisrael! B'shiv Asabatamos! Because the same way Rebbe wanted to be Oikar Tishabav, Rebbe felt that you could have faith in the fortuitous zman of Shiva Asr Batamas. And we would like to explain, very briefly, that is one of the reasons why Rebbe planted a tree on Purim. Because we know Purim is not the day of David. Purim is the day of Sha'ol. That's one of the reasons where Pinchas Karatzer says there is no kroivitz for Purim in the bracha of Es Tzemach David. Because Purim ain't a day for David. Purim is a day of Sha'ol, the rectification of the mistake of Sha'ol. And therefore, since it is a day of Shoal, Rebbe gets very nervous. And Rebbe says, for once and for all, we, we just need to declare publicly who the royalty belongs to you. Shoal, you can have a nice day, but Rebbe Natanatiya Bepurim, the Gemara says, what kind of tree? Arvarnaki Shamalachim, a royal tree. Rebbe was saying, Shoal, Binyamin, you can have your day, but don't ever forget who Malchus belongs to. Now, Tell you another Bnei Yisachar. The Yushami tells us that on the day of Rebbe's funeral, it was an Arab Shabbos and uh, there was a lot to do. So Hashem extended the Friday so that people should not have to desecrate the Shabbos. There was, and the Gemara says, <coughs> anyone who participated in Rebbe's Hespid is going straight to Olam Haba. And there was one um, launderer who was not present at the Hespid and he was so dismayed and he was so upset that he climbed up to the roof and he jumped off because he missed out of the opportunity and then a heavenly voice said, okay, the, the launderer also has a share in the world to come. So asked the Bnei Yisachar, why was it that Hashem, when was the last time Hashem extended a Friday and He made the Friday have extra long hours? The Yvon Shalom doesn't normally do that. Hashem doesn't extend Fridays. Oh, He did it for Rebbe! Because since Rebbe honored the Shabbos, He didn't want the Shabbos to be desecrated by Tisha B'av. And He says, if Tisha B'av comes out on Shabbos, Shabbos is so holy that it's going to completely push off Tisha B'av. So Midah Kenegan Midah, He was rewarded that no one should have to desecrate the Shabbos for His Levaya. Another Bnei Yisachar. How many hours of the Bein HaMetzarim in Chodesh Tammuz. Well, how many days in Chodesh Tammuz of the Bein HaMetzarim? You have 9 days of Av and 13 days of Tammuz. A total of 13 times 24, 312 hours. Shavi! Shavi! This corresponds, we know that there are 12 permutations of the Yud Kevavke. Really, there should be 24, but the He appears twice, so there are 12. Now, all of these powers of holiness, 12 times 24, which is, excuse me, 12 times 26, because the Yudkei Vavke is 26, 12 times 26 is also 312, the number of hours in Chodesh Tamas of the three weeks. All of these permutations, Holchul B'Shvi, they went into captivity, that's Marumas and the hours of the three weeks in Chodesh Tamos, corresponding to the number of permutations of God's name that went into captivity, to, uh, 26 times 12. Says the Bnei Yisachar, they went Bishvi, but ultimately God will restore them to us. Yashuv Yerachamenu, Yashuv is also 312. So Hashem gave me another great gift. Vatoimer Shiviti Adasher Tedin Echipal Davar 
ki la yeshkait ha ish ki em ki la hadavar hayahim oh this is another reason that Nami knew that Baez would settle the matter today. Number one, because the three weeks are coming. And it's not a fortuitous time for the Malchus Beis David and the, and the Shevet Yehuda. But also she said, Shevi Biti. I know, my daughter, that this man will settle the matter today. Because tomorrow starts Shevi! The 312 hours in Tammuz that it's Rea Mazle for the Malchus Beis David. And it's a bad and ominous time for the Malchus Beis David. And therefore, he's not going to get married tomorrow. He's going to marry you today. Because Shavi are coming, the 312 hours of Chodesh Tamaz. Therefore, we can humbly suggest, these fast days that are ominous for all of Klai Yisrael, but most specifically for the Malchus based of it, they were the ones who were exiled during this time of the year. But they are the ones who will experience the ultimate... Simcha, this time of the year, when these fast days, when Shiva Sabatamos will be transformed into a Yamtif, Aaron HaKoyen, when he made the Egel, he says, Tomorrow we're going to make the Egel, Chag Lashem Machar, tomorrow will be a festival. What do you mean tomorrow will be a festival? Tomorrow will be a day of disaster when we make the Egel and it will become a fast day. No, Aaron HaKoyen was looking into the far off future, Yesh Machar La'achar Zman, and he knew in the future, Tsoim Haravi, yeah, Lebeis Yehuda, Lesasainu Lesimcha. It will be for the Beis Yehuda days of great joy. And it already is. Latent in these days, Shiva Sabatamas is the day of the conception of Oyved. Tishabav is the day of the birth of Mashiach. Asar Batevis is the day of the conception of Mashiach. But when Mashiach does come, and it will be the ultimate Chag Hashem Machar La'achar Zman, then these days will be certainly for all of Israel, days of Sasan and Simcha. But most specifically, Tsaim Haravi, Vitsaim Achamishi, Vitsaim Ashvi, Vitsaim Asiri, Yia, Lebeis Yehuda, the Sasain Ula Simcha. They were the ones who were exiled, they were the ones who will experience this great joy. May we all merit the day to see that Tsaim Haravi, Vitsaim Achamishi, Vitsaim Ashvi, Vitsaim Asiri, Yeah, Lebeis Yehuda, L'sasayin, L'simcha, L'mayadim, Toivim. And our great Zayda, who always yearned for the Mashiach, and he always yearned for the Geula. He will be among the first to get up for Tchiyas HaMesim. The Ritva says in Masech Tatainis, Kal HaMesabel HaYushalayim, Zoyche Veroya B'Shuasa, that God will make a special resurrection of the dead for those who anticipated the Geula. And they will be led by our great Sadiqim of all the generations who yearned for the Mashiach and Zikeinenu Imahem. Thank you everybody for listening. I want to wish everyone an easy fast at Tzayim Kal. May we see this fruition of the Malchus Beis David blossom majestically for all of Klal Yisrael. I thank the great organization Chickens for Shabbos. Please, the Chazal tell us, Please give generously to those families in Klai Yisrael that need it. Please go right now to, to the Yad Eliezer website and give even a small amount, even better, give a big amount to Chickens for Shabbos. Agunos, Grushos, Malamden. Thank you so much. Chazak, Rabbi Meirov, Rav Yaniv, Rav, Ye- Rav Ilan, Rabbi, thank you so much. And uh, to get this humble sefer, you could go to our site, rabbidg.com, or go to the Art Scroll site. And if you want free delivery, promo code is rabbidg. I wish everyone bracha v'hatzlacha, yemalei Hashem komashas, libchem letoiva, may we be zoiche to the haromas keren Yisrael, the haromas keren ha-toira, haromas keren ha-shechina, 
the Bias Goyal Tzedek, Vimhera Vyaminu, Amin. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.